Hi, I'm Rachel Shelton. I'm a faculty member at Columbia Mailman School of Public Health, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about conceptual frameworks for research and sustainability within implementation science and also opportunities for planning for sustainability. Okay, so what actually influences sustainability? So this has been kind of a growing and emerging field um, really over the past five or so years. So historically, when people thought about sustainability, we often made the assumption, sometimes with data, sometimes without, that funding is the most critical part or influence or determinant of sustainability. Um, but we're starting to learn that funding is one important influence on sustainability of evidence-based interventions or programs or practices. But really, there's a range of factors um, that matter in addition to or sometimes maybe even instead of funding. Um, and similar to when we think about the Consolidated Framework for Implementation Research by Laura Dam Schroeder, we can think about these factors as existing at multiple levels. So related to factors in the outer context or the policy level, the inner context or the organizational uh, level, characteristics of the intervention itself and how well it fits with the population um, or the end user and the interventionist or the practitioner or the provider characteristics. So again, similar levels as we have in the consolidated framework for implementation research suggest to matter. So some of the earliest work in this area was with Marianne Shire and, and Jim Deering and their 2011 piece in American Journal of Public Health. So they started to look at and hypothesize um, some characteristics of the interventions that might matter for sustainability in terms of whether or not it's adaptable. Can people claim ownership or make it fit? Um, how inexpensive is it? What are the costs involved? Is it continuously supported by evidence? In terms of factors in the organizational setting, is there a good fit between the intervention and the setting in the first place? So you're, you're not likely to sustain it if the program isn't a good fit in the beginning. Is there an internal champion um, or leadership involved advocating for the program? Um, in the community environment, are there partnerships that lead to additional support? So if there, the funding runs out, are there other resources that can help support that? And is there both internal uh, funding available to go towards the program and support it? So again, a lot of these were kind of hypothesized or thought um, theoretically or conceptually to make sense in terms of sustainability, but many had not been tested at that time. And again, here's kind of a visual uh, or conceptual framework for sustainability of public health programs. Again, with a lot of a focus still on um, financial resources and, and um, you know, whether that was in-kind, volunteer, space logistics, external grants, or internal funding. Uh, Greg Aaron's work with the EPIS model, the conceptual framework, um, which stands for exploration, preparation, implementation, and sustainment, <clears throat> starts to think about, again, outer contextual or policy level factors and inner contextual or, or, or organizational factors that matter for different phases along the implementation continuum, with sustainment being one of them. So again, the focus here is more on those contextual factors that might matter for sustainability. What we wanted to do is we thought that um, there could be more of an empirically informed um, conceptual framework in this area. Um, so what we did, um, myself, Brittany Cooper, and Shannon Wilty sturman we reviewed um, hundreds and hundreds of articles um, over the past couple of years, and this was just uh, published in Annual Review of Public Health in 2018. And what we did was we started to look across diverse settings, diverse populations, and identify what are some of the commonalities in terms of factors that have been either descriptively identified as mattering for sustainability or um, empirically in terms of quantitatively and is actually predicted sustainability. And we pulled together what we call the integrated sustainability framework. And again, a lot of the levels are very consistent with how we think about levels for the consolidated framework for implementation research. So again, outer contextual or policy level factors. So again, what's the broader funding environment? What's the external leadership in place? What are the values, needs, and priorities at a larger level, political or social level? Um, so those factors seem to matter for sustainability across different settings. In the inner or organizational context, are there program champions? Is there leadership and support on board? What are the organizational resources or capacity in place to support the program over time? And is there staffing and turnover or attrition? 
Again, these are factors that in the literature across settings suggest to matter for, for sustainability. What about implementation processes? So are there partnerships in place? Is there training and supervision uh, continually? Is there program evaluation data in a feedback loop that, that is in place? And um, is there a, a planned adaptation process to ensure the fit over time? In terms of the characteristics of interventionists, are the, um, do they have the attitudes, the knowledge, the skills um, to support the evidence-based intervention or program over time? Um, and in terms of characteristics of the intervention, again, what are the costs? What's the perceived benefit and need and how does it fit with that? Is it adaptable? And again, these are all things that through the empirical literature, we're starting to emerge across different settings, different intervention types as mattering for sustainability. What we also did was we went through, again, all these different settings, so community settings, um, school settings, clinical and social service settings, global settings, whole systems and coalitions. And again, we started to identify using the language often that people are using from the literature. What are the factors at various levels and where you have the X's there and the tables, we started to look at where the evidence is emerging that these factors matter. So again, at the outer contextual level, at the inner contextual level, the intervention characteristics, the processes and the implementer and population characteristics. So what we also started to find is that across these different settings, certain factors might matter more for sustainability. So for example, uh, there's some, been some work in community settings that suggests that engagement with stakeholders and communication with them and planning for sustainability might be particularly important. In schools, the organizational buy-in and the support at multiple levels with the, with the teachers and the principal um, has been found to be particularly important. In the clinical and social service setting, the, again, the organizational infrastructure, having program champions and the turnover or attrition um, of staff is a critical factor. Um, in global settings, we're finding that adaptation and community engagement is particularly important. Um, with coalitions, having, um, again, planning for sustainability, having data evaluation processes in place, um, and again, engagement with the stakeholders and having a well-functioning coalition from the start, these are things that matter. So again, we're starting to see different factors in different settings that might be important to focus on for sustainability. But again, there's lots of answer, unanswered questions here. So for example, do the same factors that influence implementation um, and that we see in frameworks like the Consolidated Framework for Implementation Research, are those the same factors that matter for sustainability? Or are they different? Or is there some overlap or are there things that we need to focus on specifically for sustainability? And a lot of people in the sustainability field think that there are factors that are specific to sustainability that matter. Which implementation processes or strategies matter for sustainability? We know very, very little about that. Do different factors matter for different types of interventions, different settings, different populations or health topics? Are all factors imp equally important? So when we think about this model here, do all these need to be in place or are there certain ones that are really critical? And are there some that if you don't have, that, that have them can compensate for others? So for example, if there's no funding, can partnerships help compensate that for that, for example? And do some factors matter more for different sustainability outcomes? Remember, we often have outcomes in terms of continued um, delivery of the program, um, in terms of continued health benefits, in terms of um, continued capacity. And in some cases, we still think about um, continued penetration or um, institutionalization. So do some factors matter more for different sustainability indicators or outcomes? And these are all open questions. Uh, Marianne Shire also did some really interesting work putting forth the case or her hypothesizing that different types of interventions really might um, have sustainability determine, determinants that are differ. And she has this really interesting table in her one of her AJPH papers that again says, okay, if we think about interventions that are implemented by individual providers, are there certain factors, again, that might matter more here? So are they strongly influenced by whether or not the payment for intervention for the individual's delivery is included within normal streams of financial support? Are they strongly influenced by the individual's motivation to continue the practice? And are those different from interventions requiring coordination among multiple staff or interventions that require or that relate to new policies, procedures, and technologies? 
versus ones that relate to capacity or infrastructure building or collaborative partnerships or coalition, coalitions versus broad scale system change. So she was really hypothesizing and, and putting forth the case that for researchers, we might think want to think about the intervention type and understanding, again, what sustainability factors might differ, across, differ and might need to be in place differentially across those different intervention types. So I think this is an area that's very ripe for research. Also, how can we think about planning for sustainability? What can we do to proactively promote it? So uh, Doug Luke's group um, has done some interesting work in this area, and they define sustainability capacity as the presence of structures and processes that allow a program to maximize resources to successfully implement and maintain evidence-based policies and activities over time. They developed the Program Sustainability Assessment Tool, or the PSAT, which has a great website listed here. And so they basically um, did a lot of formative work and some validation and reliability work to think about what are the key areas for sustainability capacity that would need to be in place for sustainability. So, you know, related to environmental support, funding stability, partnerships, organizational capacity, program evaluation, program adaptation, communications, and strategic planning. So a lot of these map on really well to factors in the conceptual frameworks like the, the inter, um, integrated sustainability framework that we talked about. So they have an assessment tool that you can actually use um, as a measure, just look at what actually predicts sustainability outcomes. They also can, you can also use this as a planning tool. So they have a great, they have great resources and papers they've published in this area of how you might want to um, have your key stakeholders and partners complete the tool, um, assemble the planning tool, review the program's mission and purpose, re review the results so everyone pull the results together in terms of ranking what they think the gaps and strengths are in terms of those pieces of capacity being in place determine what might need to be changed or adapted from the program based on that, and prioritize what areas of sustainability capacity do we need to prioritize and build with an action plan, and then implement the plan and, re and reassess sustainability. So I think this is a great hands-on tool that people can use in both research and practice. And there are other plan planning tools as well. So the National Health uh, Service in the UK has a sustainability model and guide. This has mostly been used in clinical settings, but again, you can think about having stakeholders and um, team members complete this to think about what are the gaps, where do we need to build capacity, what are the factors that are gonna impact sustainability and how do we address those and, and build strategies to address that. And I think that's the next step for the field moving forward, um, or one important step is to start thinking about developing and testing sustainability strategies. And then other um, you know, approaches like community-based participatory research, program planning models like precede, proceed, and intervention mapping, these are all tools that can be used to help plan for and promote sustainability within public health.